In the last two videos, we've looked at the McLaurin expansion for e to the x in the natural log of x plus 1 or 1 plus x. We saw that the exponential function was valid for all values of x. The log function for x between negative and positive 1, negative 1 excluded. We're now going to go on to look at trig functions, sine x and cos x. If we take enough um, terms in our series, we can get a mirror for sine x in as big an interval as we want. So the more you do, the more we can fit in. Hopefully, uh, with a bit of graphical representation, we will show that later. So what we're going to do is start off with finding the McLaurin expansion of sine x. And remember, McLaurin expansion, we have to have the function, and it has to be infinitely differentiable at x equals 0. And that's always going to be the case for sine x and cos x. So here we go. This is the, the expansion. We get the f of x is equal to the f of 0 plus f dashed of 0 multiplied by x plus f double dashed of 0 multiplied by x squared over 2 factorial, and so on and so forth. And then we get the r derivative of x to the r over r factorial and so on and so forth. So that's the general um, formula for the McLaurin expansion. Okay. So what we'll do, we'll do this from uh, differentiating sine x as a function of x and then building our general result. So the f of x is going to be equal to sine x. First derivative f dashed of x will be equal to cos x. The second derivative, f double dashed of x, is going to be equal to minus sine x. Third derivative, f triple dashed of x, will be equal to minus cos x. Fourth derivative, f to the fourth of x, uh, or the fourth derivative, I should say, is going to be equal now to sine x. And then what we're going to get is the fifth derivative is going to be equal to cos x. You will see this pattern cycling in terms of the values we get of f of 0, f dashed of 0, f double dashed of 0. So f of 0 is going to be equal to the sine of 0, which of course is 0. f, uh, f dashed of 0, so f of 0, sine of 0 is 0, f dashed of 0 is going to be the cos of 0. Cos of 0, of course, is 1. The second derivative, f double dashed of 0, we get minus sine of 0. That again becomes 0. The next one, we get the third derivative, and we're going to end up now with minus cos of 0, which will give us minus 1. The fourth, we're going to end up now with sine of 0. The sine of 0, of course, is 0. And then the fifth, when we take 0, we're going to end up now with cos of 0, which is going to be 1. We're now going to simply apply that just here. And what we can say, then, is that sine x is going to be equal to the f of 0, which is going to give me 0, plus the f dashed of 0 multiplied by x, which of course is just going to give me plus x. Then we're going to get plus 0. And then what we do is the third derivative. So we're going to get minus 1 multiplied by x cubed over 3 factorial. Just consider, I'm taking now the third one. The second one yields naught. The third one is going to be now minus x cubed over 3 factorial. And then we're going to go on. The next one is going to be plus 0. And then finally, in my terms anyway, what we're going to get now is plus x to the fifth. We've got one lot of x to the fifth over 5 factorial. So we get plus now x to the fifth over 5 factorial. And in general, when we are expanding um, sine x, it will go dot, 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 on and so on. And we will end up now, let's remember this one, it's going to be... Um, 1, let's think from my brain, uh, minus 1, and then we're going to have to the r, then we're going to have x to the 2r plus 1, um, all over 2r plus 1 factorial. I think that sounds right. If it's slightly off, please um, please check that. Uh, it's, it's been a while since I've done it, um, and I should really look it up. But essentially what we get now is that sine x is going to be equal now to x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial, dot, 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 and so on. And in the main, you're going to be asked to use this. This is valid for all values of x, and this is the general result we can quote unless we're told to differentiate. 
So let's look at that in action. Um, and I've got the graph up. And again, this applet, the same one that I used last time, it's not mine. I'm going to put a link to it on this video. So please check out the site. It's really good. Uh, so here we are. Uh, linear approximation sine x. So first one, we've got sine x is equal to x. We can see that's a straight line. If we increase that now to a cubic, we can see in the vicinity, in the neighborhood of x equals 0, where the Maclaurin series is centered, it's still pretty good. Okay, And then if we increase that now, that's where I expanded it to. So we can see this is going to hold true uh, pretty much in, in all of this area right here from negative to positive 1. Then if we do another one, that looks pretty good. That looks like it's going to hold further. And that looks, uh, x to the ninth over 9 factorial, looks pretty clean up to the point now from negative to positive 3. And as you see, we increase these now, and it starts now coming nicely and converging for us. And this is valid for all values of x. So there we go. That's, um, that's now sine x. And if we bring it back down, this is the sort of thing that we're going to be dealing with in an exam. Sine x, use the first three in the expansion, x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the f over 5 factorial to find those. Okay, so let's put that down there. So there we go. That's what we wind up with on that particular case. Let's now look at cos x. Okay, again, cos x is defined for all values of x. And we'll start off with now the f of x is equal to cos x. Derivative is going to be f dashed of x is going to be equal to minus sine x. Then we get f double dashed of x is going to be equal to minus cos x. And then we'll take the third derivative and we'll end up now with sine x. And then we'll take the fourth derivative of x and we'll end up now with cos x. And you can see the pattern is going to return. So f of 0 is going to be equal to the cos of 0, which of course is 1. f dashed of 0 is going to be equal to sine of 0, so negative sine of 0, which is 0. f double dashed of 0 is going to be equal to negative cos of 0, which of course is going to give us negative 1. And then f to the third, so third derivative, is going to give us sine of 0, which is going to give us 0. And then the fourth derivative at 0 will give us now cos of 0, which is going to be equal to 1. So there we go. And in general, our expansion, we can now write this as cos x will be equal to, consider we're doing the f of 0, which is 1, plus f dash to 0 multiplied by x, which is going to give us 0, plus f double dashed of 0 multiplied by x squared over 2 factorial. So you can see we're going to get minus 1 times by x squared over 2 factorial, which we can now place in. So minus x squared over 2 factorial, plus the next one, which is going to give us plus 0, and then we're going to wind up with this one. So we can have 1 times by x to the fourth over 4 factorial, which is going to give us plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial. And then we're going to get the dot, 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 and so on and so forth. And then with cos x now, what we end up getting now is minus, let's remember this, minus 1. And then we get x to the r. Uh, and then what do we wind up with from here? We get x to the, let's just remember this, x to the 2r. So let's to write this now. Uh, sorry, minus 1, 2 Oh, it's a, a nightmare to try and remember. I should really refer to them. We get minus 1 to the r. So let's put this here. And then we get x to the 2r over, uh, what do we get on here? 2r um, factorial. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it's something along those lines. If it's not, please do uh, write it out correctly. And, and that's our expansion, essentially. So we can wind it up, and we can, and in general, you'll write it like so. So what we can say then is cos x is going to be equal to 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial, and so on and so on and so forth. So that's your general expansion. And again, if we look at this graphically, what we can see is that this is going to give us a good approximation too. So there's cos x, and that's defined for all values of x. So the only one that isn't so far that we've looked at is the natural log of 1 plus x. So let's grab this up. Um, okay, so here we go. Cos x is equal to 1. Quite clearly not a good approximation, as we've got now um, a straight line. 
So when we increase this, there's a quadratic approximation, which looks quite good. Quartic approximation, which certainly in the area we're concerned with, the neighbourhood of x equals 0, looks pretty good. And you can see as we're increasing this now, we're getting closer and closer, and that's providing a very good approximation. So there we go. That's what we wind up with. That is the expansion now, the McLaurin expansion of cos x. We've just looked at sin x, and you can quote these general results.